What's up guys? How are you guys doing? I uh, hope everything is fine wherever you are, that you're having a lot of fun with your friends, family. This is Pepe Cuenca and I welcome you to the game of the day of round number three of the Grand Chess Tour of Croatia. Today I bring you a fantastic game that has been played between Shaq Mamediadov, super player from Azerbaijan. Maybe he's not playing his best chess in the last months. And Ayan Nepomniachi, the Russian player, uh, before this game he was uh, ranked number four in the world so he's playing like a beast in the last months so let's cut the bullshit and see what happened in the cc4 squares so d4 was played by Mamediadov, knight f6 c4 and g6 Nepomniachi probably showing his intentions of going for the Grunfeld one of his weapons so here Mamediadov goes for knight f3 bishop g7 and he goes for e3 a really humble move uh, avoiding all the main lines in the Grunfeld. As you guys know, normally black waits to play d5 until uh, white has developed this knight to c3. The reason, so uh, if you play d5 now, c takes e5, knight takes e5, e4, you can now take on c3 and then you're gonna uh, put a lot of pressure in this center by playing c5 and knight is in knight c6 later. If you play d5 here, which is not very good, after c takes e5, knight takes e5, you go e4 and this knight has no piece to take so probably you just had to go back and then white is much better with a lot of space space advantage sorry so knight f3 was played by mamediaro bishop g7 and e3 and now nepomniachi goes for short castle bishop e2 and d6 playing in a king's indian style he wants to go knight d7 and e5 and then try to occupy some space in the center so knight c3 was played by mamediaro knight b to d7 by ayan nepomniachi and short castle e5 was played. Here there are many interesting options. For Mamediaro you can go queen c2, rook e1 has been played, b4 and b3 was played by Mamediaro. Of course a really natural move intended to go bishop b2 or maybe even later some a4 move and the bishop can come to a3 to put some pressure in this diagonal. Now Nepomniachi goes for rook e8 reinforcing the center and also uh, preparing a possible e4 move. And as you guys uh, take a look and think about this position, if black closes the position with e4, this is some sort of uh, King's Indian attack with reverse colors, right? So this is actually pretty interesting. Now Mamediaro went for a3, maybe not the best move, I don't know, it's a really natural move, but uh, the thing is that after e4, knight d2, as happened in the game, you already gave black uh, a contact point for this bishop right this bishop in the future could be sacrificed on h3 there are plans related with h5 knight f8 knight f7 i don't know so maybe bishop b2 it's another possibility but okay h3 it's a totally uh, normal move in this position and now i and nepomiachi decides to go for e4 knight d2 and here h5 was played this is a really natural move again why because you want to go knight f8 this knight can join the party on the king side by going by h7 and g5 and also whenever there is pressure on this pawn on e4 you can put this bishop on f5 and it cannot be hit it by a pawn on g4 this is really important that's why h5 is so useful in this kind of uh, positions and now mami diado decided to go for b4 and actually you just saw that uh, he uh, lost actually a tempo so this is like if i and nepomichi was playing with the white pieces a uh, king singular attack right uh, not an opening that we can see uh, very often in the top chess tournaments right but it's a lot of fun there's a lot of attacking ideas and also uh, black normally in this case white no uh, white normally wants to go a4 a5 b5 when i was a kid my teacher my teacher told me all right if you are playing uh, the king's in the attack whenever your opponent goes a5 and b5 just try to uh, stop that attack by playing a6 if white manages to go a6 and then you have to go b6 this square on c6 c6 sorry could be used all right so after b4 now knight f8 was played by uh, ayan nepomniachi rookie one uh, this is a defensive move really natural in many occasions you want to put this bishop on f1 protecting this skin which looks a little bit weak so bishop f5 was played now by ayan nepomniachi and bishop b2 by uh, mamediarov you guys have to know that after queen c2, which looks like a natural move, putting pressure on e4, there is also this interesting idea, knight e6, and now in many occasions you want to sacrifice uh, temporarily this knight on d4 in order to get the piece back. Let's say, for example, if you go a4 here, there's boom, knight takes d4, and after e takes d4, 
e3 and actually white is in real troubles in this kind of position let's say you go queen b3 of course it takes e2 if it's possible but these moves also uh, come to our minds right it takes f2 and knight g4 look at this uh, continuation it's so beautiful h takes and let's say for example queen h4 and king f1 and bishop d4 and this is checkmate nobody can save your ass in this position so after uh, sorry after bishop f5 uh, white went bishop b2 and queen d7 which looks like a really natural move connecting the rooks and also intending maybe in the future to sacrifice this little guy this little little monsters on h3 and now maybe a little mistake from Mamediarov. at least uh, after the move he goes for it he goes for it. then his position is not that easy to play and uh, iron nepomniachi's play is really automatic he goes for the move knight d5 which is very typical in the king's indian uh, attack when uh, you play with the black pieces actually it's a move that i have seen in many games but it is in this case uh, particularly after knight takes d5 c takes d5 it's true that you have gained some control of the c file and then your uh, your play is going to be focused on putting a lot of pressure on this c7 pawn right but on the contrary, this bishop is a terrible piece, right? Uh, it's locked by his own pawns, sorry, d4, and there's no uh, good per perspectives uh, for this guy in the future, right? On the contrary, uh, black's play is really automatic. You want to go queen e7, queen g5, starting uh, creating some troubles on the king side. This knight can join the party by a h7 and f6, and there's a lot of, there are a lot of attacking ideas in this position. So queen e7 was played by Ayan Nepomniachi and rook c1 by Mamediarov, like now targeting Carlitos from the first uh, row. And knight h7 was played by Nepomniachi and now queen c2 attacking c7. And now Mamediarov probably was thinking, all right, he's got to protect this pawn with rook c8 or something like that. But Ayan Nepomniachi says, you know what, I'm going to try to crush, to crush you with queen g5 attacking on h3. And this point is really important in the game. Mami uh, went all in with the move queen c7. The position is not easy at all because it looks like king h2 could be a really natural move in this position. But after queen h4, actually, you're putting pressure on Facundo. And even though Facundo is a superhero, you know, it's, uh, his value is like 10 points even more than the queen. So Facundo is in real trouble. And also this knight is joined the bachata party on g5 and then h3 looks like so weak like looks like they're gonna sacrifice uh, i mean it looks like iron and pomage can even sacri sacrifice his balls on h3 right with uh, success so after queen g5 uh mommy tries tries uh, queen c7 and bishop a3 of course forcing bishop f1 otherwise it's gonna be checkmate in the next move and here uh, it's really uh, it's really good the way uh, Nepomniachi plays because now, of course, White is intending to take this pawn on d6 and then probably try to go back with this queen to g3 or even h2 to protect this skin. So that's why bishop f8. This is a really humble but effective move, just protecting d6, keeping this queen away from uh, the king side. It reminds me uh, to that game with uh, between uh, Magnus Carlsen and Anish Giri, where uh, where Anish Giri's queen ended up in a4 you guys remember that game from the first round so this is like a similar case all right you have uh, won like two pawns after queen b7 white uh, sorry white's a pawn up but then this queen is so far away from the action and all black pieces are focused on the king side which is uh, gonna be uh, extremely easy to play for for iron and pomichi so knight f6 was played by the russian and queen a6 and now a move that i really liked what i while i was doing commentary today on Sp in spanish uh, broadcast so bishop c8 was played by iron and pomichi it's not an easy move to do right to play because you go back to your home for christmas and then what you want to say is all right you know i got another plan with my pawn on the h file i want to go to h4 and h3 and then create some troubles you go g3 they're gonna be a lot of weaknesses on the light squares and also some h2 ideas and now this queen has to go back to a4 bishop d7 uh, chasing the queen queen d1 and bishop g4 following the queen so at this point uh, mamediarov uh, maybe he was a little bit desperate with his position he went for f3 
trying uh, to believe in Facundo. I understand him, you know, we all do. But uh, after Queen A4, something like that, at, uh, after H4, the position is just a mess for, for White. Look at this piece, look at this piece. If this piece were in, uh, was an F4 or were on F4 or H2, maybe uh, White will have some chance. But with this piece on B2, actually, position is just terrible. So it takes a three, sorry, Bishop G4, F3, it takes a three, Knight takes f3 and queen h6 was played by Nepomichi, keeping the pressure on the e3 pawn. So Mamedyarov uh, protected it by playing queen b3 and now h4, intending h3. And again, this heavy piece really far away from the action, pressure on e3, a nice bishop on g4, nice square on e4, pressure on d5. And basically, uh, white is busted in this position. So here, Mamedyarov trying to create a lot of mess in this position. He says, you know what, I'm gonna go 95 to see if you capture this and then I win probably some space in the center and then some diagonal that can be open for my monster on B2. But you know, after 95, Nepomniachtchi says, I'm not gonna take your knight, I'm just gonna play A3. There's no need to take that knight on E5, even though probably it was good enough as well. So h3, now there are many many uh, mating ideas with h2, knight e4 and knight g3, that's why uh, Mamidiarov had to take on g4, knight takes e4 and again you are threatening h takes e2 followed by queen h2, h2 followed by knight f2 check, this is just a real disaster for Mamidiarov, so g takes h3 was played, knight takes e3 and now look at this position, man. What else you want in life? You want a nice boyfriend? You want a nice girlfriend? Why? You got this position in the in the board. So shut up and enjoy your life, and then just checkmate your opponent. So rook c3 was played by Mamedyarov, and then this is so easy to play for black knight f5. Look at all these three heavy pieces, extremely far away from the action. If you just exchange a pair of rooks, all black pieces are attacking. Queen g5 is coming. Bishop h6 is coming. Pressure on d4. So that's why rook d1 was played, protecting d4, but now after queen h5, rook f3, bishop h6, actually Mamedyarov resigned. Why he resigned? Well, you are threatening to go bishop uh, e3, followed by queen g5, and if you go something like rook d3, there's rook e1, and look at all the coordination from black pieces, like another rook is coming to e8, there's bishop e3, check, queen g5, knight h4 ideas, this is just a real mess for the white players. So Nepomniachtchi, he just crushed Mamedyarov in 30 moves with the black pieces. He's playing an amazing chess and he's playing extremely fast. A lot of people think that he could be one of the uh, possible challengers for the World uh, Championship uh, against Magnus Carlsen. What do you guys think? Uh, I don't know. So uh, it's been a pleasure for me to analyze this game as usual. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. So just remember, if you drink, don't drive. And if you play, the Philly door, don't drive, correct? Okay, right? So just, oh, you can play the Philly door and drive, but don't play the dragon and drive. It's just like drinking booze. All right, guys, see you in the next video tomorrow. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye, Sayonara, baby.